Hello, welcome to Tea for Lunch, a weekly show powered by Arcade Studios. Each week, we'll serve you the top stories that we're following in social media, entertainment, celebrity, and tech in 15 minutes or less. You can catch the show live on Instagram or TikTok Thursdays at about 12 p.m. at Mountain Time or on all podcast providers and YouTube on Fridays. We're your hosts this week. Nanny. And Taina. Hello. How are Welcome. you, Taina? I'm doing great. I'm yeah. in the middle of moving right now, so things are a little bit hectic, but I'm doing good. Nice. How are you? Same. I'm in the middle of moving. Yeah. We're like, it's it's that moving season for everyone, I think. It's summer, yes. So. Summer is when everyone moves, yeah. Yeah. Are you settled? No, not at all. Are you? <laughs> like, no, we, we still have to pack, so like we got to start packing soon, but we have some more time than you, I feel like. Yeah. I just have to unpack, which is the part that I actually hate the most. Yeah. I'd rather pack, honestly, than unpack. It's just so stressful. Yeah, I think I agree. I'd rather... No, actually, I'd rather pack than unpack. I'd rather someone do it all for me. Pack, unpack, unpack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to have movies. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, this is just too much work. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Let's just get right into it. Let's do it. First up, hot off the presses, um, a developing story, Montana to become the first U.S. state to ban TikTok. This has been something that's been rumulating in the internet for a hot minute now. Mm-hmm. Um, and Montana governor signed legislation yesterday to ban TikTok from operating in the state to protect residents from alleged intelligence gathering by China, making it the first U.S state to ban the popular short video app i don't know how i feel about actually i know how i feel i don't like it yeah it's always going to be a developing story but i think like this is another step that is being taken towards it actually may be happening i think there's still some loop that needs to be or like some hoops that need to be jumped yeah um i think a lot of it is going to be mostly around like the legal side of it because like Mm. montana is just a state um so what does that even mean and like for those that are currently using tiktok in Montana, right. um, like how will they regulate that? Like maybe fining, but I feel yeah. like it's interesting because yeah, it's the first like swift, tangible like piece of paper that someone that's a governor has signed in the U.S. So strange. So they said that they will make it unlawful for Google and Apple's app stores to offer TikTok within the state, but will not impose any penalties on individuals using the app. Oh, okay. So the ban is to take effect in January first, twenty twenty four. Um, and it's definitely going to face some legal challenges because how are you going to regulate that? Like, that's a little bit weird. So it's like no one could download it in Montana, but it still works if it's already downloaded. I'm just a little bit confused about it. Yeah, people, but are, just, I, people are just going to change their VPNs. It literally, yeah. <laughs> I personally was like, I didn't even think this was going to happen. And like for TikTok to be banned in any part of the States. But even if it is, I just thought people would definitely find a loophole and just put their VPNs in Canada because that's what we do for Netflix. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And like we, we saw <laughs> you just added My yourself right away. Don't come Hopefully that Netflix isn't watching. <laughs> no, but uh, we, we saw like uh, the trial that uh, this TikTok CEO was put on like a couple weeks ago and like yeah. a lot of the um, fears that the US government has around this is just like them sharing data with the Chinese government, which um, you know, you, you can have your own opinions about that. Yeah. But as a whole, I feel like my sense on this is no matter what, it infringes on the First Amendment of, mm-hmm. of people, yeah. uh, especially people in Montana. So if this does happen, it'll be really interesting to see how it unfolds. But you already know here at Tea for Lunch, we're on top of this. So yeah, we got you. It's hop like... out the press, <laughs> we'll keep an eye out, and if anything else happens in the coming weeks, we months, will let you know. We'll let you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so on to our next story. Mm. Twitter is getting a new CEO. You might have heard some of this rumblings this week, but it's official. Linda uh, Yacarino is taking over as Twitter's CEO. Linda is an American media executive. She was a chair of advertising for NBC Universal. And on May, 20, on May 12th, Elon officially announced that uh, Yacarino would succeed him as a CEO um, mm-hmm. for Twitter and X Corp. Uh, it's funny, he did this in true Elon fashion. He hinted at it uh, in a tweet. <laughs> So he said, oh, and then he made tweet. it official in a tweet as well. He said, I'm fi- excited to welcome Linda as our new CEO for mm. Twitter. Um, her primary focus will be around business operations, while I focus more on product design, new tech, and she's, he's really looking forward to working with Linda to transform this platform into X and everything else. Mm. Thoughts? I like it. I think that it's really good that Elon is removing himself a little bit from Twitter so that people aren't really doing that connection as they were before. Yeah. Um, and I do like just have the fact that the fact that they had their ads budget slashed in half or yeah, not budget the, yeah the revenue, revenue. um <laughs> and so she that's her primary focus so for her being able to come in and really help with that i think it's a really smart strategic move um but also just personally we don't not a lot of people like elon so yeah. it's just like yeah i feel like ever since the acquisition by elon like 
they've been bleeding by the billions, mm-hmm. especially with like their ad revenue, just yeah, as Tayna mentioned, being half. So I think one, it was a really strategic part on Elon to hire her because that is her expertise. Um, she's actually known as like the velvet hammer around mm-hmm. the um, advertising community um, yeah. as someone who's like really, really strict and um, but fair. Yeah, fair and like a really great negotiator. So I feel yeah. like she'll business sense that's that's really going to help Twitter. Mm-hmm. But also like to your point, a lot of people are associating Twitter with Elon himself now. And yeah, I think a lot of that is kind of on him yeah <laughs> uh, he's very public facing with you know like how he keeps he, doing more he conducts himself mm. so i think it's a really smart um move on his part to kind of remove himself from that and then also like you know for as polarizing of a figure as elon musk is um one thing that is i think undeniable is his ability to build uh products and yeah. and tech and i feel like yeah. he has a good track record with Tesla and SpaceX and mm-hmm. um, even PayPal, his first company that he started. I feel like him being able to focus on just that side of the business yeah, will that'll really be good help for them. Yeah. because um, his uh, other side, well, him being a CEO isn't necessarily, I'd say, his sweet spot. Yeah, I think it's good for him to be able to focus on tech and then have the, uh, Linda to focus on um, getting back those advertisers that they lost. And she's called the Velvet Hammer because of her silky but tough negotiation style. So interested to see how she's going to bring that to Twitter and help with the revenue again. Yeah, and honestly, like even if I think about it, it's a huge role that he's trying to fill. So I think... Yeah hopefully they work well together and mm-hmm. all the best to Linda because yeah. I feel like part of it too is she's stepping into a bit of a mess right now yeah but looking at her track record and you know knowing the very little that um, we know about her yeah um, I think she can do it yeah we're rooting for you Linda yeah we're rooting for you we're you rooting for this. you we're cheering for you good luck I know that means the best to you all the best to you baby. <laughs> Uh, so next up, something brand new is coming to the Bachelor franchise. Enter the Golden Bachelor. Ta-da! Ooh, so exciting. I don't know why. <laughs> that was the sound that came into my I felt like Golden... Yeah, it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> On Tuesday, ABC announced that it'll debut The Golden Bachelor this fall to showcase uh, it's a whole new kind of love story, one for the golden years. Um, On the show, one hopeless romantic will be given a second chance at love in search for a partner with whom to share the sunset years of life. Like, literally adorable. Yes. Um, The women will arrive at the mansion with a lifetime of experience, hoping for a chance at love. In the end, viewers will watch the golden man return to the page or turn the page to start a new chapter with the woman of his dreams. This is so cute. And I personally just heard about it for this show. And just listening to um, other people talk about it is just it's really highly anticipated. A ton of people have been Mm -hmm. asking for this. Everyone really wants to see representation with the older community. And I think that media is starting to shift and have more of that representation, especially with Martha Stewart being on Sports Illustrated. And now this Um, it's really important for reality TV shows to be skewing older as well because the generation that was started watching The Bachelor and other reality TV shows are getting older and it's good for them to see mm-hmm. not just 21-year-olds, 19-year-olds finding love, but you can also find love in your sunset years as well. And it's literally adorable. Yeah, and with like the rise of other like love reality type of TV shows, like mm-hmm. Love is Blind, like those have taken off. Yeah. The Bachelor is kind of an OG in this. Like They've done this for a while. That's but true. Hot minute. Rumblings are... Um, that ratings have kind of decreased a little bit and a mix of people wanting to see more representation and kind of putting a spit on The Bachelor Mm -hmm. um, has made this a really anticipated and wildly um, exciting TV show coming out. Yeah, they had to shake things up a bit and I think that they did it in a really good way by doing this. Yeah, and a lot of it was like, I mean, I've seen one season of The Bachelor, I think it was Hannah's uh, episode, and when I watched it, I was hooked. But I remember like the parts of it that got me hooked were like, just the general nature of people like trying to connect with each other so like mm-hmm. one thing we were talking about before the show is like the first rose ceremony where like first impression yeah you, you mm. hop out of the limo and then you like <laughs> try to catch the attention of whoever the bachelor is yeah and then like what, what would you do advice. what would you what say what would i do yeah i feel like i would freeze up well i would do something really stupid i don't know i would <laughs> I uh, tell it hit the woe. I'd hit the woe. I'd hit the woe. Can you imagine? No, I would not hit the woe. <laughs> but uh, I, I feel like they're just like those are the moments that like make the show like these kind of shows really great. It's yeah. just like seeing people trying to um, 
you know, like the quirks about yeah. them. And I feel like and you connect with the contestants as well. Yeah. Because that's when you get to know them. Because it's also their first impressions to the audience as well. Yeah. So it's like us getting to know them while also the bachelor page number. And then things like later on in the show that progress. So like, okay, you get to meet, mm-hmm. if you go further on in the show, like you'll get to meet um, like the, because they were younger, it'd be like the families or yeah, like the, the parents. parents. Mm. But not because like they're older contestants. Like who do they meet? Well, they meet the kids the or like. Family friends. Family their friends. little community. It's going to be awesome. Honestly, so I really cool. think it's going to be a really, really awesome show. What time do you think they'll do a cocktail hour? Or like Cocktail hour would be tea time. Tea time? Starts at 10 a.m. <laughs> <10 a>. <laughs> and then we'll have, we'll have to wrap it up by noon. Yeah. <laughs> so. It'd be really interesting to see how they do this because it is a different demographic. Um, so they will have to switch some things around. I feel like they can't do things as late as they normally would because there there were rumors that it was like super late when they would film the cocktail dates. or Even for um, the younger uh, exactly it was hard yeah. for them to keep up so they'd have to film overnight apparently oh my goodness like i wouldn't even be able to do that so i'm interested to see how they're gonna change things up to keep it spicy but still really entertaining and also still in true to fashion with the bachelor franchise yeah for sure yeah awesome well thanks for joining us everyone now that we've wet your palate go eat something more substantial bye